Hello and welcome everybody, this is Roland from graphicinmotion.com and it is tutorial time again. In this tutorial series, you will learn how to shatter a light bulb. Let me give you a quick introduction and overview over this tutorial series. I actually created this project about six years ago and I made it as an After Effects template that is also available on VideoHive and on my website. In this tutorial series, I want to show you the whole workflow how to create this project. We will start in Cinema 4D and we will set up a quick animatic in the first part, then we will add some dynamics to this, we will add some materials, then we will use Redshift to create a render, export an open EXR multipass render and we'll import this into After Effects. And in After Effects, we will do the final compositing. If you want to follow along this tutorial series, you can get all the required assets on my website. I will put a link right down in the video description. If you liked the video, I hope that you consider subscribing to my channel and give me a thumbs up. And now, without further ado, let's get started with part one and let's create this animatic in Cinema 4D. Okay, now we are here in Cinema 4D with a blank scene and let's start to set up our scene. So first of all, I want this to be a 25 frames per second project. And I want the length to be 250 frames, or actually let's make it 249 frames, because then including frame zero, we have exactly 250 frames. And I will also go to my render settings. And for the sake of this tutorial, I will just use an HD resolution because then everything is a little bit faster when I create previews or when I'm later on working with Redshift. So let's set this up. Usually I don't work in HD anymore. It's everything is more or less full HD or 4K nowadays. And I will make sure just to turn off save for now because I don't want to save any previews if I'm rendering something. Okay, so these settings look fine. Now we can get started. So first of all, let's import our light bulb model. And therefore I go to a merge project because I actually want to merge my light bulb scene in here. So let's open this up. Let's press H to frame it. And you see if we open this up that we have all the parts here. We have the sockets down in the base here, then the glass. Then we have the stamp, as I called it. I really don't know whether this is the right, whether this is the right term for it. Then we have these, these wires here that are holding the filament, and we have the filament here. And everything is nearly everything is still parametric. So you could come in here and change things. And we will change some things here later on. But for now, it's fine as it is. So Let's do one thing here. Let's apply a render tag to our class, a display tag in this case, because actually I want to use another shading for this so that we can see behind it. Just, just like that. Now you see we can just see the interior of our light bulb. In this part, we are going to create a quick animatic so that we have a rough sketch of our timing, of our animations and how everything will look like. Usually, I always like to start with the audio, especially when I'm working on an intro animation or a template, then I always start with the audio. So usually I have already a plan or idea in my head. Sometimes I do some sketching, sometimes I do some testing before, but as soon as the idea is more or less finished in my head, then I'm searching for music because it's very good if you have a good music track that is really giving a rhythm to your animation. And usually go to Audio Jungle for this because as a video have author, I can use Audio Jungle preview files and the authors on Audio Jungle are actually uh, appreciated if you use their music in your templates because then they of course can get some sales as well. So that's how we do it. But in this case, I had a problem. I had this idea. It was really clear in my mind, the light bulb, it should explode, you know, the camera should travel in or dolly in inside close to the filament and the logo will be revealed in the filament. But I couldn't find any music or any logo intro audio that fitted my idea of this, of this animation. So what I did is I created some sound effects myself and just used these as a basic guide 
for my animation. And I want to import these now into Cinema 4D. So how can we do that? To import an audio, the easiest way is that you go and create a null object. And we will call this audio. Then we open up our timeline by hitting Shift and F3. And I will just dock it right here and make it a bit bigger because we will need it anyway. Now with my audio now selected, I can go to create here and I can add a special track and I can add a sound. Now let's open up the file here for the sound. I can load a file and in this case I want to use my sound effects and these sound effects are also included in the assets download. So let's open this up. And if you drill down the sound effects now, you see that we have an audio wave in here. And if we play this, we can listen to it. So let's do that. So you see in the beginning we have this buzzing sound that is more or less describing how our light bulb is loaded with energy. And then at exactly 125 frames we have the explosion. Then we'll travel through the pieces and in the end here at around 200 frames the pieces will fall to the ground. So this audio is a really good guide for the timing of our animation. I will just put in three markers here. So let me turn off the audio for now. Just click this button and then the audio will not play when you are scrolling your timeline. And I will just create some markers here. At 125 frames, I will call the marker explosion. Oops. And I will colorize it in red. Then I will add a marker at frame 75 because this is where the intense buzzing begins and where our, our explosion is more or less prepared, where the light gets really bright. This is happening right here. So let's add in a marker right here and call this the buzz. And I will make this, let's say, green. And then we have another marker at around 200 frames and this is the reveal as I would call it because this is the point in time where we will see our logo clearly and where we will be close to our logo and let's give this also a nice color something different here okay so now I just added these three markers just that I know the parts of my animation now I will create a simple camera move so let's add in a camera and for the camera settings, I actually will use a little bit of a wide angle camera. Let's use this 25 millimeters preset here. That should be fine. And I will position it or I will zero out the position and rotation. And now let's set the camera up quickly. So let's move out here a little bit and let's also pull it up a little bit. Let's take a look at these numbers doesn't look too bad so let's put in nice numbers here minus 2000 and here I guess it will need a little bit more yeah like 400 for now so let's just see whether this gives us a nice starting frame and it's not too bad but we are too close so I want to move out further so let's say minus 2200 and I think that this is a little bit better in Cinema 4D there is a quite good option to add some guides for your composition in the scene and you can find these here in camera compositions and here you can enable all these things. You can enable the grid, this is very useful, triangle, golden spiral, diagonal lines, a golden section or a crosshair. And in my case I will use these golden sections here because this gives a quite good representation and a feeling for the composition in our scene. We are very centered here, you know, it's a very easy scene, we only have one object here. And I want this to be placed right in the center and I want this to be yeah, in focus here in the middle and I think that the position is not too bad. Now let's add a simple camera move. I don't want to animate the coordinates in this case because I want to retime my camera move and it's easier if I can just use one value. Our camera move is really simple, it's just a straight line dollying towards, the, dollying towards our light bulb so we will use a spline to drive our camera. So let's go into the side view here and let's choose the pen tool here 
And now we will just create a straight line from my camera. And let's move in here now. Exactly more or less to my filament here. So something like that should be fine. And then press escape to close our spline or to just end the spline tool. Now I will add a tag, animation tag, align to spline to my camera. And now actually uh, added it to both. I don't want this only on the camera. And now we will add this spline here into this field. Now let's rename the spline actually. Let's name it camera move. And I will also just group these two and call them camera. Okay, so now if I choose my align to spline tag, and if I change the position, our camera should travel along our spline. And this looks pretty good. So now let's take a look how this looks from the perspective of the camera. So this is our starting point, looks good. And then we zoom in and we will get very close to our filament. So I think that probably something like this, like 86 will be our final resting position to reveal the logo right here. We will add in the logo later in After Effects. So the only issue that I see is that the filament is a little bit too high in my composition right now. So I have to change that. And let's do that by just manipulating our spline. So I will go in here, go to the point mode and select this point here. And you see in my camera, there is this green line in the middle that represents the center of our field of view. And now I can align this pretty easily. I actually want the filament to be slightly below this line. So now if we go back to my perspective view and you see this is perfect. So this works perfectly because then we have room here to add in the logo. And now we can set up our animation. So I know that this position will be my end position. So I can set a keyframe here at frame 249. Let's just set a keyframe here. Now let's move forward frame zero and of course set this to zero because this will be my starting point here. Now I have this linear animation. But actually what I want is that my camera is traveling very slowly until the explosion. So I will go to frame number 125 and I will turn down this value to let's say maybe 10% here. And then the camera will move really slowly in the beginning nearly no motion, and then it will speed up when an explosion is happening. Then it will travel through the pieces. And then I want it to slow down again at around 200 frames. And then we will just dolly in very slowly to our final position. So what we do here is we have to increase this position value. Let's see, maybe I put in here, so it was 86 was my final value. So I will put in 83 for now here. And let's take a look how this looks like. Now let's play this animation. And let's just take a look how this works. I think actually this is pretty good. So now let's play it together with our audio and let's take a look what this does. Yes, I think that this is fine. So what we can do to, to create a bit more of a feeling that we have a representation of our explosion in here is we can create a very simple explosion animation. Because I said I want to create an animatic. Animatics are usually very rough versions of your animation. And these are the first animation pieces that you send out to a client uh, to get the timing right and so that you can get a feel of, of what we are doing here. And to do that, I will just use a matrix object and in the matrix object, we will use the object mode. And as an object, we will just use this lathe here inside my glass. So let's just drag this down here. And then you will see it will create some matrices here around our, our glass. Let's increase the number 150. And now let's add a MoGraph effector, in this case, a push apart effector. Because this way we can create a really simple, a very simple explosion animation. So let's set this to, let's see, 150 maybe. Yeah, that's quite okay. Now let's do this animation here. On 125, I know that the explosion is happening exactly here. So I go forward one frame to 124 frames. Let's turn off the audio again. And I set a keyframe here with a strength of zero. Then I move forward one, two, three frames maybe. 
and set it to 100. So let's see how this looks like. Let's turn on our audio and let's play our animatic. Okay, so this is it with part one of this tutorial series. We created a quick animatic just to get a feel for the timing of our animation. And in the next part, we will actually shadow the light bulb and we will actually set up these dynamics and the explosion animation. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in part two.